Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Wind in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. Today's subject, we're going to be going over balancing WoW. Now, this can be a variety of things. This can be content balance, class balance, uh, variety. Uh, why did I put variety? I'm so confused. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> uh, variety in terms of uh, uh, different segments of the game. So PvP and stuff like that. PvE, PvP. But obviously we will start off with the weekly stuff for retail. And that is the world bosses this week are Valinor and Morgeth as always. So make sure you grab your anima, grab your conduits and get going with them. Get them nice done early. The brawl for this week is Packed House. This is just everyone's thrown into a small arena, the arenas that you would queue into in a 2v2 or 3v3 situation. And it's about 15 versus 15, I believe. And it's just chaos. You want to be a caster for this. You don't want to be a melee. I will tell you that right now. Melee is not fun unless you have an immunity in there. So definitely look to be a caster if you're going to do this uh, brawl. The weekly event for this week is... Burning Crusade Time Walking. So you can do Burning Crusade Dungeons while gearing up some ults, as well as it is as well as it being the last week for the Legion Time Walking. So you you have one more week to do your Legion Mage Tower if you want a certain transmog for a certain class, or if you want the Werebear for the Druid, stuff like that. If you just want bragging rights for the uh, uh book, the spell tome. After doing all seven of the challenges, that also is available still. But you've got one more week to do it, and it won't be back until, I think, around halfway through 2022. So you'd be waiting quite a while in order to do this again. Now, we've had a question through. It's a lot more of a simpler question, but I'm more than happy to answer it. It reads as follows... I'm struggling to make gold in TBC and retail. Retail for the legendaries that I cannot purchase and TBC for consumes for raiding. I play warrior and don't really know what to do. Any thoughts? So making gold is always a big priority in any type of WoW, whether it be Season of Mastery, uh, TBC Classic or retail. Now, they all have their own different uses for gold retail like it says in the question has its use for legendaries and stuff like that um tbc has more consumes for raiding and season of mastery is also very consume heavy when it comes to raiding so the way to go about making gold there's many different ways that you can make gold you can passively earn it through just killing mobs if there's a high Uh, density of mobs that drop some very good trash loot that you can just vendor that is very nice to do if you just want to uh, mind numbly kill something for an hour it will like over that time generate you quite a fair amount of gold this is obviously if you've just got time to kill you might maybe watch uh, youtube on another monitor or on your phone in the meantime something like that uh, depending on professions, you can certainly make a lot of gold with your professions. So depending on if you have a gathering profession or not, gatherers will obviously make more gold. So herbalism, mining, skinning, definitely mining and herbalism. If you can get lucky with it and find the right herbs at the right time, you can definitely get a very good uh, gold per hour sort of income from that and uh, you're generally looking to do around the dead hours of the game so when people have gone to sleep or before they even wake up something like that you can maybe spend half an hour just you know flying around a zone picking up herbs and you can do that once or twice a day and it will earn you a couple hundred gold so it can be very simple as that or it can be something as simple as you know uh selling your services so if you're an enchanter with say mongoose enchant or if you're an enchanter with uh, 
you know, one of the Soul Frost, I think it's called, one of the Karazhan enchants uh, that's a lot more niche. You can certainly make a nicer uh, profit doing that because you can ask for tips from people. So you can provide the service, but it will be a 50 gold tip on top of it or something like that, 25 gold, etc. And that goes the same for classes that uh, or professions that you can sell stuff so golden spell thread for tailors you can definitely put that up on the auction for several hundred gold and you can just passively farm these um these materials to make it so all of these professions you should be looking at a lot more if you can but raw gold is also not to be underestimated in tbc as uh, the Obviously, inflation goes up each in each expansion because more gold is being generated within the world. And this is just passive gold. It all comes from somewhere. And that somewhere is from mobs out in the open world because the mobs drop uh, trash items that you vendor. And then suddenly you've got five gold from that trash item. And another 100,000 people have sold five golds worth of items and, you know, so on and so forth. So definitely don't underestimate the uh, trash mobs and how much their stuff actually vendors for because a lot of people overlook it and it's definitely not to be. So this is how to do it in TBC. Obviously, if you are a mage or something, you can AoE farm and stuff like that. You could do a lot of other things as a mage. You can boost. Paladins can boost as well, stuff like that. In retail, it's very much a similar sort of scenario so you can make the legendaries and sell them on the auction house. You can make potions, sell them, stuff like that. But really, what I said for TBC about underestimating uh, trash drops, definitely do not underestimate uh, Shadowlands trash drops. You get so much raw gold from just vendoring, from questing, from daily quests. You get about 300 gold per daily quest sometimes uh, if you're doing like the more quests or like the assault for, uh, quests in the more they give you about 255 i think so definitely do not underestimate them it's very easy to get gold in terms of raw gold it takes a couple hours of just you know questing having fun maybe level an ult or something because the bonus objectives do give gold as well so it's very easy it's a lot easier to get gold on retail at the moment than it is tbc but tbc is also very much there so I really hope that helped with the question and let's get into the the episode. So balance in WoW. How would you measure how would you measure balance in an MMO? You can't. That that's the uh that's my take on it. You can't measure balance in an MMO. If you want it to be fun and engaging, you need different classes that can do different things because if everyone did the exact same thing it wouldn't be fun why why would you pick a warrior over a mage if they did the exact same thing what what would be the point there is no point exactly so it's the class diversity that makes these games what they are you will never get balance in the game You'll never get class balance in the game, I'll say, because every class has its own strengths and its own weaknesses, and they have their own different matchups when they go against each other, when they're in raiding and stuff like that. So an example, if you look at TBC and retail, TBC PvP is tough. It's very simple. But it's tough when you don't get the RNG on your side. Or it makes it a lot tougher. So Warlock Druid is currently what is running rampant in 2v2 in TBC. It is one of the best class uh, compositions in the game for TBC. And that won't change. That will never change. That's mainly because TBC will not be looked at in terms of a balancing perspective, because this is how it was balanced at the end. This isn't constantly changing. This is how it was balanced at the end of TBC, all of the classes and stuff. The raids are changing after each phase, sure, 
but the classes will not change. So all throughout TBC, every single season, one, two, and three, some classes might change, some classes might get better because of the better gear and stuff like that, the stats, but Warlock Druid is a staple point of uh, TBC Arena. Now, it's insane to think about because it's an absolutely ridiculous composition and it's infuriating to play against. But if you look at it and compare it to, say, Retail, Warlock Druid, it's a good composition. It's not bad. But if you look at something like a Melee Cleave in 3v3, a Ret- Retribution Paladin and a Arms Warrior, they can absolutely devastate people. It's kind of the meta right now. You're looking at Warrior Mage Druid as a very strong composition. You're looking at God Comp, which is Shadow Priest, Fire Mage, Druid. You're looking at so many different variations and it constantly switches. The meta of what composition is good constantly switches due to the game being vibrant and getting, I was going to say frequent uh, patch updates. It gets patch updates. (laughs) That's uh, the best way to go about it. But it gets patch updates that try to um, nerf and tweak classes to bring them in line if they're overperforming or underperforming or anything like that. So it's a constant um, fight for the top uh, in retail, whereas that won't be the case in TBC. It's very much just a stale, yeah, Warlock Druid's the best or one of the best. I'm pretty sure it will be the best because... Warlocks don't die, druids don't die, tanky as hell. Like, yeah, you're just, you're not going to beat it, are you? <laughs> um, the same can be said for raids. So in terms of raiding in TBC, you're obviously going to be looking at five shamans because you want one shaman for each group for heroism. If you're looking to play it perfectly, you're looking at multiple hunters, multiple mages, multiple warlocks. You're looking at a very caster-heavy group, mainly, compared to, say, uh, Season of Mastery, where it might switch up. It might switch up, I will say that, because you'd usually go for the melee cleave. Not melee cleave, I'm talking PvP right now. Um, you're going to be looking at a lot more melee heavy composition in the 40 man raids just because rogues and warriors do a lot more damage instant damage than casters than hunters and stuff like that in that specific era of world of warcraft Uh, this could change because they are implementing some changes they're trying to tweak things which is really good because again it's trying to tweak that balance and have it constantly flowing constantly changing that's what You know, I enjoy personally in the game, and that's what I think a lot of other people uh, enjoy in the game personally. So it's very tough to get a raiding composition that's perfect, but there are always going to be those classes that are better than others. There's always going to be, you know, the Warlock's just outperforming the Warrior by two times its damage. Why don't we just bring in, you know, five extra Warlocks instead of five extra Warriors? It, it's just double the damage then like we don't even need to deal with some mechanics and stuff like that so during wow well, you're always going to have a struggle for balance and i think this is why it is fun because you're constantly going up against different matchups so i'm going back to a point that i said earlier but i didn't really elaborate on uh the matchups aren't in favor of you in tbc uh Warlock Druid will be a Mage Priest or should be a Mage Priest very easily because the Druid just doesn't get CC'd by the Mage at all. The Warlock beats the Mage outright in damage and survivability and everything. The Priest can't do much because he'll get mana drained, he'll get cloned, he'll get whatever. It's not fun. So if you go up against this in, say, Shadowlands PvP, a 2v2 in the exact same situation you probably have more chance to win as a mage priest than you do a warlock a druid. Or it's a lot more fair and even grounds, I would say, because, you know, everything's been tweaked to try and incorporate everyone's getting an interrupt, everyone's getting a form of CC, 
everyone has a form of heal or absorb or survivability defensive cooldowns defensive cooldowns have always been in the game but they're making it more streamlined so that you know it's every minute that you've got a defensive cooldown instead of say ice block that's a five minute cooldown or say something like divine shield for a paladin that's a five minute cooldown you know warlocks have like death pack now which gives them a 50k shield and it's like insane it's insane and that's on a minute cooldown so it's absolutely nuts so you have more of a chance but again there's always going to be a favorite in these matchups you're not going to get the perfect uh the balance in perfect but like i said at the very start why would you pick a warrior over a mage if everything's the exact same and balanced like perfectly you wouldn't because you've got different play styles you might like the charge in zug zug kill everything and you know hit anything that you see moving or you might like the yeah i'll just spam them out with frost bolts and you know frozen or blizzard i'll just blizzard on the pillar they can't go back they're slow as hell they can't even move and slowly but surely kill them uh that's my favorite by the way well they're actually both very uh fun i i do have a warrior and it's it's very fun i'm not gonna lie to you i have yeah i have and prefer casters a lot more so than melee and the reason for this is just mainly because I prefer the play style. I prefer what they have, the utility. I prefer mobile classes. I'll say that because I don't like having my character be slowed. I feel as if it's a form of CC that I don't necessarily want to deal with most of the time. And that's why I main Druid because I can uh, shapeshift out of them and stuff like that. So I can just sort of ignore them in a way but it's all of these different things like a druid can shape shift out of slows a warrior just has to trudge through them but at the same time i prefer or i like playing my warrior over my druid sometimes because i like just how consistent the damage is on a warrior compared to a druid and stuff like that so you've got all these ups and downs of different classes and it incentivizes you to actually play these classes and enjoy them and learn them. Not just sit on your one character and, you know, be content with it and just complain about every other class because it's unbalanced. No, you play the other classes to learn why they're hitting you so much, to learn why they're so good in a raiding environment at the moment. And you can benefit off of their strengths in a raiding environment and you can take advantage of their weaknesses in a pvp environment and stuff like that so you can constantly learn and you're constantly updating your brain to register okay he's pressed this this is when he's actually scary so this is where i will be you know on the uh receiving end of balance being on his side because he's hitting me for 30 percent more damage or something like that it's you know you get so much information because the game isn't balanced that it helps you play the game to a better level and that's what's really fun about it well to me anyway some people hate it some people absolutely despise having um like different classes have loads of different things but i don't understand it you're in you're playing an mmo to you know, have different classes, experience the world differently on different, like, characters. And, you know, it's it's just part of the MMO genre. You will never find perfect balance in MMOs. It's, It's impossible. It is impossible in terms of the numbers will need to be exact for whatever reason. You don't know how they measure it. It's very much, okay, this has got... Okay, I'm going to give you an example here. Windwalker monks. They have an ability called Spinning Crane Kick. It hits for nothing. Until you apply a talent to that. Until you apply multiple stacks of your Tiger's Palm to that as well. Until you apply procs of the talent that you've picked. Whatever. And then suddenly it's hitting for 240 odd percent more damage or God knows how much. And it's one shotting you. It goes from doing about 5% of your HP 
to one-shotting you. Imagine trying to balance that. Imagine trying to balance the numbers that go with the like all of the damage increases by percent, damage increases by number. Imagine trying to balance all of these numbers for how many classes are there? Well, this is going to be quick. 12? 10? I feel like 12 is way too much. Around 10. I feel like that's an over... I'm going with 10. I'm going with 10 just from my heart. But imagine trying to balance all of that. You've got so many things that you just need to juggle about and make sure that something isn't too OP or too underwhelming or anything like that because people might not enjoy the class. The class that they liked and they loved, they might not enjoy anymore because it's not hitting like it did or it's, you know, not as fun to play because they've taken out a system that was in play but no longer is because it was too overpowered, something like that. So there's many different things that you can look at when it comes to balancing WoW. And like I said, it goes both ways in terms of raiding and in terms of PvP. It's very um, tough to ever find balance, but it's something that needs to be looked at fondly in the MMO genre rather than looked down upon, mainly because it's what makes the MMO genre, you know, the imbalance, the different classes, the how you play them, all the different numbers. For it being impossible, I think they do a very good job at balancing the game. Now, you could tell me monks and warriors and melee and all of that are ridiculous, which is true. I mean... I've got my warrior. I've never played a warrior before, and I'll just start slapping people. Like, it's ridiculous. I'll just full zug zug their ass and just not even care. I would honestly cleave them down. It would be so stupid. And then I'll go on my warlock, and I'm having to do like 20 setups, you know, fear 20 people at the exact same time while my mage gets a polymorph, and then we might have a chance to kill. But it's. A different type of playstyle, and that's enjoyable. But again, melee have their like time to shine at at the moment. They are very powerful melee. If you look at melee in the previous expansions, they kind of are very lacklustre. It's very much been casters. If you look at mage, mage has always been one of the top picks in like PvP. In PvE, they've been very decent, but. PvP, Mage has been a staple point throughout the entirety of the game since Classic launch, or like vanilla, I should say. It's insane. They will never get the balance right, but it's something that should be admired in the game rather than looked down upon. And that's all I had to say. It was, it came across my mind, this one, when I was just, I've been doing loads of arenas lately, and it came across my mind and thinking... Wow, it's insane how much I just get one shot randomly by like the same classes compared to like how much it takes for me to set up my damage on a warlock or a druid and stuff like that. So it it was something that I wanted to address because you can just laugh it off if you uh, get one shot. It might be infuriating, but it's pretty funny when you one shot someone so you just got to laugh when uh, you get one shot as well because it is very entertaining. But I'll leave it there. There's not really much I can say more about the balancing well. It is a, it's a very weird subject and I will just leave you with uh, that it will never be balanced and that's what a staple point of the MMO genre is all about. But I do want to say thank you all very much for this year. It has been amazing. Thank you all for supporting the podcast and stuff like that. It's been amazing seeing the numbers and downloads go up each and every week, seeing constant downloads every day. It's you make my day whenever you do click on the download and listen to one of the podcasts. Be sure to check out all of the social medias, of course. Uh, check out the YouTube, Twitch, stream on there regularly. Videos are going up regularly on YouTube. Check out Patreon and everything like that. There are, I think, about 
the same amount of Patreon podcasts now as there are normal podcasts. They are weekly and they are just, you know, 10 to 15 minute snippets, extra content for you guys to enjoy if you sign up to that Patreon podcast. So definitely don't miss out. They are good and I do put a lot of effort into them. Thank you all very much for listening as always and go with Valor, friend. Goodbye all. <laughs>